everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these springy Easter pot holders. They're supposed to be reminiscent of a Easter egg and I've kind of decorated them as eggs. So I'll show you how I do the, first of all, we'll make the egg and then how to add the stripe technique and then the little spring, I don't know, maybe where are they? Like a daisy flower technique. And they're a nice size and these are double thick. It's worked in the round. So this is uh, two layers of uh, stitching. And this is beginner friendly and all we are working are half double crochet. And you want to use 100% cotton yarn and a five millimeter crochet hook. So for the starting chain, I'm going to chain 46 stitches and it's work from the bottom up One, two three four five six all right i've got my 46 yarn over we're not making a circle just yet yarn over one two skip those first two and start working half double crochet all the way across. <clears throat> now we're not in a circle yet, that's coming up. So when I finish this, there will be 44 half double crochet. And this is worked in a spiral. There's no slipping to join any ends. And just some simple increases and decreases to create the egg shape. All right, so let me finish these uh, half double crochet and I'll come back. All right, I've got my 44 half double crochet and now the way it's going to be joined is a little, it's unconventional. working yarn up. So it's still, we're not going to be slip stitching. I'm going to bring this end here. So it's almost like turning it inside out. The free tail, the starting tail, make sure that's facing down. Yarn over. So we're going to just keep working half double crochet go into the top of the first stitch. Pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through, and then let's uh, make the remaining 43 half double crochet all the way around. Just, just make sure everything's facing upwards the twisting well it's easy to not have twisting when you're working this way if you join it um, that first chain it just twists all over the place it's very frustrating but this will allow us an open bottom to work our decoration as we go and then to do a little shaping at the base as the final step I'm just going to work my 44 have double crochet and then I've got another flip coming and then we're done with those so we'll just be working our increases and decreases so I'll meet you back at the end of um, this uh, round two all right so I finished around you can see the edges will line up perfectly and then we're going to just flip back one more time Make it right side out. And I want to bring my yarn through just to make sure that it's not stuck in the middle when I'm working. And then that's all we'll be doing with that flipping around business. Okay. And then we get this beautiful look. So this is half double crochet when it's worked in the round. It's just gorgeous. Now I'm going to do some increases. 
and I'm going to increase by four. So I'm going to go from 44 stitches to 48 stitches. And when you see these increases, okay, again, uh, first of all, there's no chain one. We're just working in a spiral. There's no unsightly bunchy areas where the joins are. And you can use this hanging tail as your I, uh, idea, reminder of where your round is, or you can use a piece of uh, yarn thrown in here or a stitch marker. But this should be sufficient because there aren't any huge increases and you'll just be evenly spacing them. All right, so I'll make my first and I need four. I've got 44 stitches, so probably about every 10th stitch, I'm going to do an increase. And the increase is simply two half double crochet worked into the same stitch. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there's my tenth stitch, and I'll work two stitches in here to count as my first of the four increases. Okay, so I did two half double crochet in that stitch. I'll do another maybe 10 stitches. So you always want your uh, increases to be evenly spaced. I'm not going to do all of the increase rounds with you. I'm just going to show you how they're done. And then you can work from the pattern to do your increases. So for most of the rounds, it's a four increase or four decrease. Some of them have, oh, maybe two fewer or two more than that, but think of the clock. So you would do increases at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. And that would evenly space it. I'll do two again. Whoops, half double crochet. Half double crochet. And then the second one. So there's my second increase for the round and I'm at about the six o'clock position, I can tell because there's my starting tail and here I'm at this at 12. I did one here and then here at six. So I'll do um, some more stitches, do another one right around nine o'clock. All right, another increase. One, two, into that stitch. So it's, now I'm at 47 stitches and I want to get to 48 before I come up to this tail. All right, so I've got one more increase to do as I get a little bit closer to the end. Put it in right now. I've got just five or six stitches before the end. All right, so this next round is going to have a larger increase. There's my last stitch. And then here's the tail, so I know I'm at the end of the round. And now from here, 48, we're going to go to 55 stitches, and that's what, seven stitches that need to be increased. So I'm going to space those out every, um, maybe eight stitches. Three. So I'll start my first one here. My fourth stitch, I'll do my first increase. There's no perfect way to do it or magical number count. I just want to evenly space them around. I have 55. Okay, 
a bit here and there. Oops. And I can feel right there, I just went over a increase from down there. So I don't want to do an increase too close to that one. I'll do one or two more stitches and then um, do another increase. Like a second increase. I've got to do five more. another one here and I'll meet you back at the end of this round where I will have 55 half double crochet when I'm done. All right, so I finished this round. You can see that's working these increases to get this shape. So the next few rows, let me see, we've got four rows of no increases or four rounds I'm sorry it's going to work these four uh, four rounds of the 55 stitches that I just increased to so that's how easy working the increases are and I will come back and uh, when it's time to start doing decreases and show you how to do that. So there's going to be a little bit more of an increase to reach this, the fullest part of the egg up here. I'm just going to show you the measurement of this also. So to finish, there's about 10, let's say without the ring. So I have it on a wood ring, 10 inches by eight and a half. So it's a nice size. I have long hands. I'm a tall woman. I've got long everything. So very functional still. All right, so I'll be back. Let me work these rounds. All right, so now I'm at my first row where I start decreases. I believe it's 16, uh, row 16 where I start. So here's my first stitch of the round and I need to decrease by four. So the decrease is a single crochet two together and it will look like uh, a very close to the half double crochet when it's done. So I'll go into my first stitch, pull up a loop, then go into the second stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on hook, yarn over, pull through all three and then I work I have double crochet until it's time to do another single crochet two together. So I'll do four of those decreases in this round. Now at this point, if you are making the striped version, I'll put a time stamp in the video. You'll need to start working these, you know, where I'm at this point now. Otherwise, it's going to be too difficult to work as you get towards the top. So um, at this point, I did this many, you know, these three. And I, I did a few more rounds, maybe three. And then I did my next one, you know, worked more rounds and de then did these towards the top. Um, the finishing, all the finishing will be at the end of the video. And I'll put a timestamp there. But if you'll watch that before, you know, if you're working that first, uh, go ahead and look at that before you go much further than round 16. And I'll have that written in on the pattern, whether you have the PDF ad-free version or if you're doing the free version on my website. Let's see, what did I do? Five st stitches, okay. Do a few more. And then another decrease. I'll do those at the 12 o'clock, three o'clock six o'clock and nine o'clock position. So I'm not quite at the three o'clock position yet. There's a little rain outside, if you can hear it. Actually, it's a lot of rain. I live where there's a extreme weather, it seems like all the time. Okay, I'm doing a decrease. 
go into one stitch, pull up a loop, next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. That's how you do the decreases. So I've come to just before the last row at the top and I've held it open with a stitch marker because I want to work on my decoration before I close it up. I really want to be able to get into both ends to work the uh, flowers. So I'll come up at the top and put this here for display just so you can kind of see how I worked it. And I don't have it on both sides. I just have it kind of wrapping, coming in at these edges here so that they peek over, like this one's peeking over around. up and make my first petal. So how I work these is I just bring all the petals into where the center will be. And I'm, I've got my hand in here. I'm looking for that knot, just feeling where it's coming up against the edge. There it is. And then how I measured mine, I went in about two stitches, two rows down to make a dramatic enough of a stitch in proportion to the size of the pot holder. So you see here, there's top row one, and then it came down two rows. So I'll look here. I was doing a lot of decreases at this row, so let's see. This is the same row one, here's the next row, and then I want to come in also. So this will be my diagonal outer or petal that flares out. It won't be that center top one that points more northwards. This is the northwest pointing <laughs> petal. Right, and just come through. Don't pull too tight. And then I'll come in again up here for that north. Whoops. Hold my hand out too soon. North. Here, hold it. We yarn in. Careful not to tangle. and then go into that same stitch for that first petal was anchored. And then I'll just build it around. So I did five points for each of my flowers. And I wanted them to look a little scattered and uneven, kind of like a wild flower, even though it's a daisy color. So instead of going just the same as this one, I wanna go a little bit to the side, just to make it look a little more rustic and sweet. And nearly all of my flowers have just one row apart instead of two, just so that they're not looking too perfect. You see here, this is a shorter petal, and then all the others are longer. That's just creative choice. So that's how I do these, and I space them around. And uh, in your pattern, whether you have the PDF version or your on my website with the free version, you'll have a clear image of this to reference back when you're working your petals. If you want to duplicate how mine looks. If you want to do the stripe effect, you'll need to start doing that as you work up, otherwise it's going to be too difficult. So I'm going to take a double length of yarn and it needs to be very long to do this. All right, so fold it exactly even in half so that this is your center point of the two long lines under. Use your 
your hook, same hook you've been using, five millimeter. I'm gonna start around here, the third row, and I'll do it here where my little seam is. I'm going to bring it up and you'll need to be just grabbing it there, bring it through. And keep it a little bit loose just so that this does not pucker. Okay, so I'm going to skip over the first little space, go into the second one, go under, draw up the yarn, pull it through, keeping it loose. Skip this space here, go into the next one. And again, draw it up. And it gives kind of a braided look. Very pretty. Oops. It's a little tedious, as you see. <laughs> Grab it. Here we go. Up. Pull through so that it's loose. Skip the next. Go in here, pull up, pull through, kind of loose, not too loose, skip next, make sure it's loose enough. I'll just keep doing that all the way around and then I'll do my next color next color and then I'll continue working the body some more following the pattern all right so I've come all the way around and then I need now to secure my yarn so I'm gonna pull up quite a bit Go into that space where I first started. Actually, I don't need to pull up quite that much because I'm going back down in here. Going back down into that first space where I started. Bring my yarn. This is where I need to pull it. Just make sure there's no buckling. And then I will cut it from, this was the working yarn. Get that out of the way and then knot it back here. Just, that's all you have to do. Trim. And I can put in my next color. All right, I finished stitching my decoration. So I'm going to work my last round and then and the last step for this part is to attach the ring. So there's one more decrease round. We've got three decreases here on this round. There's my first one. And then my last one. Okay, so I'm going to continue to work my stitches over to the side so that I can start attaching the uh, wood ring from this side. split 
here. Let me do that because I don't want to be looking at that split yarn every time I grab this. So from this one, I'm going to cut a long tail. Put the long tail because I need the yarn to come through the wood ring. I can't do that when it's still attached to the ball. So put it on here and just single crochet across. So I'm going to find actually let me come from this direction. I bring my stitch over into here. Whoops. It's always a little tricky working these on. Okay, so come through, then work my single crochet. Go in, find the corresponding stitch on the other side, come through, and then single crochet. So I'll do this three or four times, but I don't want the ring to have a bunchy look up here. It should be just a smooth, rounded, that and then pull the yarn through and weave it in. So it should kind of be nestled in there, not um, sticking up too much because I still want a rounded top. I don't want too much of a point on the egg. Okay, let me get a, let's see if I have enough length here. This might be enough to close up the bottom. I'm going to make a big chunky knot like I did with the, um, the yarn that I did for the flowers just to kind of anchor it on the inside. It doesn't have to be quite as chunky because we're going to be going over it a time or two and that'll hold it in place. Okay, three knots. And I'm going to bring it in from the back, not at the end, but in about an inch. Okay, there's my knot caught there. Then Fold in the bottom just a little bit like that. You see how that rounds that edge there, like a little bit of a pleat. And then secure, I bring this through and I wanna work just a little bit into this to make sure it stays pinched close. Just maybe two stitches there back and forth. And see how that's rounded it nicely and get work my way back up here and then begin going back and forth just at the very edge here so we still have a pretty straight edge going right under those stitches that were um, at the bottom of the starting chain. So when you worked across before joining, so we're going back and forth, do not wrap like the mattress stitch. We'll go under, back and forth like this. See how I'm going under the stitch, not around. That'll look a little bit messy.
You make sure all your ends are tucked in here or trimmed down so that they don't peek out when you're doing this. Oops, I went around. See how that just does not look good. Okay, so let me finish this and then I'll do the little tuck in this end with you on camera as well. Okay, so I'm getting kind of close to the end. I've got about a oh, inch and a half, so I want to pinch it in. Again, press inwards. You see how I'm just tucking it just like that. Make sure it looks the same as the other side. And just hold it there as I come up to it. So this is where the pinch starts. It's a little jumbled up there, but you can force your uh, tapestry needle right through it pretty well. And then I'll secure it by going over the area maybe three times. Just, just snugly work it in there. And come back. And then from here, I will weave in my end and this one is done.